cataractcoach.com, operating on a fellow ophthalmologist. And his request, make it perfect, and I want a video of it. So here's the case. This is an ophthalmologist here locally in the Los Angeles area, and he's about 60-ish years old, and he has this posterior subcapsular cataract. So we're instilling some anesthetic inside the eye, some preserved free lidocaine, which was diluted with balanced salt solution. Now, of course, for a fellow ophthalmologist, he actually knows exactly what he wants. We did the lens calculations together. He's chosen a refractive outcome of about minus a quarter. And he knows he has a little bit of against the rule of stigmatism, so we'll make this phaco incision here temporally on the steep axis. That should get him pretty neutral, just about to zero coin astigmatism afterwards. So there's that posterior subcapsular cataract. I just want to look here. That's about the size of the rex we want to make. So we'll measure those forceps. We want a nice five uh, millimeter capsular rex, maybe five and a half, and we'll tear that. Now you may be asking, why didn't you use a femtosecond laser? I mean, you have it in your surgery center. Well, this ophthalmologist said, I'd rather have you do it with your own hands. You don't need a laser. So there's our rexus, looks pretty good. Let's take a look here at this opacity. Now, I just want to make sure that there are no components of posterior polar. And I think we're okay here. So we'll look at the red reflex, see the fluid waves going back, and it goes pretty smoothly all the way across that. I'm looking very carefully just to make sure we see that goes across smoothly. It does. So for sure, this is posterior subcapsular, not posterior polar. We do a little bit of hydro dissection here. All looks pretty good. This surgeon wants monofocal aspheric IOL, so we'll be putting in a single piece acrylic lens in that regard. A little bit of extra dispersive viscoelastic to protect those central endothelial cells. And now it's time for some phaco. Of course, this is the nerve wracking procedure. Anytime you do cataract surgery, it's something you really think carefully about and want to give the best to your patient, but especially so when your fellow ophthalmologist is your patient. So we'll buzz into the phaco probe. Here comes the chopper, quickly chopping the nucleus into two halves. Let's separate those fully. And now we can simply bring up each half and emulsify it. This will go down very quickly and very easily. Now, of course, we're taking our time here. There is no rush. We want to have a beautiful outcome, and we want that for every patient. I've done surgery now on about 50 ophthalmologists, and this is a treat because this is someone I've known for many, many years. We've even worked together in, uh, in some ways in the past. And now it's time for me to perform cataract surgery for this colleague. Here's the remainder of the nucleus being emulsified down um, very carefully. Chopper in the protective position. Got the smooth end of the chopper towards the posterior capsule just to make sure that we don't get any surge. And there we are done with nucleus removal. Time for irrigation and aspiration. We'll get the IA probe next and we'll clean this out. Now you also notice the incisions are made the way I like them, which is good architecture, very evenly done, and the incisions are barely nicking the limbal blood vessels. To me, that's important because that means it's great long-term healing and stability. These very slightly vascularized incisions will not be able to be opened up very easily in the future. So if, if there's a car accident, an airbag hits in the face, something happens, these incisions are sealed shut permanently. They're good. So let's do a little polishing here of the undersurface of the anterior capsular rim. That looks great. You can still see some streaks of our dispersive viscoelastic in the eye. Of course, that'll all come out at the end. Now we have made our incision here, a 2.75 incision, and we made that temporally, and that is because this doctor has some against the rule of stigmatism, and that 2.75 incision is going to be beneficial compared to a smaller one. Injecting our cohesive viscoelastic, filling up the capsule bag. And there we see we have a nice rexus. And you can see the Purkinje images in the center of that rexus. So rexus is nicely centered. We're going to deliver the lens. Here comes our single piece acrylic lens. And that goes in the capsule bag nicely. And the surgeon here 
which is me, chose for the patient, which is also an ophthalmologist, another surgeon, this lens with a very slight tint to it, and that was for patient preference. Rotating the lens into good position, we see we have a very nice overlap of the optic by the capsorexis. Let's go behind the optic and remove viscoelastic and finish up the case. So we always wonder to ourselves, well, what would I want if I was having surgery? This is kind of a neat situation because this patient is an ophthalmologist and he did have surgery. And now you can see what he chose, a monofocal aspheric lens with a goal of pretty close to plano, just a slight degree of myopia and an incision to help decrease his astigmatism. A very nice outcome here. I'd be more than happy to share this video with that doctor. And I'm really proud of this. We've talked about what's your signature for each surgery. Well, that signature is primarily that incision and that capsorexis, and I'm proud of both of those. Those look really good. So sealing up the incision here, let's go inside the eye, just making sure we don't have any viscoelastic stuck in the angle of the eye, centering up the eye well, exactly where we want it. We're gonna center it just a little bit more. Of course, this type of eye well is a little bit tacky, so it'll stay exactly where we put it. And that just looks beautiful. So thank you, fellow surgeon, for trusting me with your own eyes. Of course, it's an honor. And thanks for watching.